Hello guys and welcome to this tutorial related to McAfee application control and not only but as well to ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager. Um, here we're going to ingest, we're going to gather events uh, from application control and we're going to view them using the ArcSight DSM. And so what is McAfee application control first of all? Um, if we have to summarize application control, we would definitely say that this is a software that offers an effective way to block unauthorized applications from running uh, on uh, basically your uh, systems. So um, IT departments face tremendous pressure to ensure that systems and servers comply with the security policies operating procedures and regulations. Users can uh, you know, unintentionally introduce software that possesses a risk to the business, install malware, create support issues, and uh, to violate as well the software licenses, compromising systems, and uh, of course your business. So uh, businesses of all sizes need an efficient way to standardize systems and servers to make sure that uh, they are running only approved software without impacting productivity. Application control software allows only uh, authorized applications on servers, corporate desktops and fixed function devices. So when application control is running in enabled mode, you can choose a set of files, directories, drives like Windows, uh, uh, volumes on Linux and registry keys to protect unauthorized changes. So application control prevents unauthorized changes to your system uh, components by right protecting them. Exactly in this video, what we're going to do, we're going to test, we're going to try uh, to edit, to delete, to essentially modify a file. Here I have prepared a graph or like a flowchart uh, where we're going to take a look at McAfee uh, application control again. And like in this example, you can see, for example, that here we have uh, some threads and custom ATM applications. So two different uh, type, for example, of events uh, that uh, basically the uh, application control uh, product will have to evaluate. So the custom ATM application, um, basically the um, application control is going to evaluate whether if this application is on the whitelist or not. So if this application is present in the whitelist, then uh, there is no problem, just process the application, uh, run the application. As you can see in this particular case, this is a, uh, an ITM. So run the application and that's it, no problem. Uh, but how about if a particular threat is uh, trying to, um, I don't know, uh, you know, modify a file to uh, edit, to delete, uh, you know, one of your uh, system files or uh, registry keys and so on. So lock again uh, this information. Uh, basically, the application control is going to stop the applications, those threads from modifying a file and then um, all this information will be locked and it will be present for the McAfee policy orchestrator. So in this example, we have uh, McAfee application control. And um, yeah, in my environment, I have deployed McAfee agent. The McAfee agent uh, actually is in between, as you can see, the McAfee application control and the McAfee policy orchestrator. We're going to be uh, using port 443 between the McAfee agent and McAfee EPO just to uh, uh, perform the event flow. Actually, this is the default port that the McAfee agent uses with uh, McAfee EPO to perform this kind of communication, agent to server type of communication. And then uh, I have deployed as well on the same server, as you can see, a McAfee EPO database smart connector, which is a an ArcSight agent, which is a an ArcSight smart connector that basically gathers data uh, from the McAfee EPO database. So in order to gather this data, we're going to use JDBC, so Java database connection, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna be connecting through port 1434 with the uh, SQL server that um, McAfee EPO uses as a database. 
uh, with that being said now um, yeah so the McAfee EPO smart connector is doing the entire normalization uh, on the whole mapping parsing of security raw data to the ArcSight event schema uh, as well um, the filtering the aggregation of events again is done here on a connector level um, and yeah once uh, we have uh, parsed the data in the ArcSight event schema, then we can process this data, we can uh, forward the security data to the ArcSight Enterprise Security Manager for evaluation, for analysis and for um, additional investigation if uh, needed, for example. So all those events are going to the ArcSight DSM and uh, yeah, basically the ArcSight DSM is performing uh, the correlation of uh, those events that we have gathered. Then what the McAfee ESM, um, sorry, not the McAfee ESM, but the ArcSight ESM is um, communicating through port 8443 with the ArcSight console. Uh, the ArcSight console, this is the place from where we are viewing the events and everything. And as well, the ArcSight ESM is installed on a Linux CentOS 6.10 uh, operating system. Okay, so here we are, uh, the Windows Server 2012. This is the registry key that uh, we're going to write protect. So in other words, uh, using the application control, we're going to say to, uh, yeah, to the system that uh, this is a particular file that we want to protect from being uh, overwritten, from being uh, edited, from being deleted, from being modified, in other words. So we open the McAfee um, application control. Um, this one basically is uh, installed um, locally on my machine, but uh, I'm managing as well the solid core through uh, EPO. Um, Essentially, uh, you gotta use uh, command line in order to um, set everything for uh, your uh, application control. So with this command, just like I'm trying to type right now, as admin, and then uh, I'm just saying uh, wp and uh, c. Uh, so yeah, c users administrator. So I'm pointing essentially to the folder that I. Okay, so let me try now to open and delete the file. Delete, oh, okay. So, oh yeah, the problem is that I forgot to uh, enable the uh, McAfee application control. So uh, now I have to enable it. Uh, that's why it allowed me to remove the file. Uh, okay, so yeah. EPO managed, as you can see, and uh, as well, it says in disabled state. So now we need to uh, enable it. Okay, as admin, enable password. I'm just gonna type my password. All right, so we need to reboot now the system. I'm gonna do this uh, very quickly. I'm gonna fast forward. So now the system is restarting and in a few seconds we should be okay. Okay, so the server is restart. So uh, send control out delete and then uh, let me type the password for my server, okay, and now we're in. All right, let me take a look now. Um, yeah, the server is loading, of course. It's gonna take some time. Um, okay, let's try to open the application control. Right click, run as administrator, as admin, and then just status. Uh, <laughs> Okay, it says in update mode, even if I've set actually uh, enable. So the update mode, this is just another mode of the McAfee application control. 
um, this is not what I wanted uh, but just one second um, let me say enable um, alright first we have to disable this update mode then uh, so as admin help will give you a few tips how it was um, yeah I know that it can be uh, disabled let me find just the command it should be yeah okay again as admin um, and yeah you password okay all right now should be fine so as admin and then enable enter okay now it asks me for the password and that's perfect okay after I have enabled it let me check as admin enable okay now after enabling the application control immediately started blocking some uh, applications some DOL files and so on um, I have opened here the uh, application control panel from where we can see everything that the program started blocking immediately but let me um, do this uh, as admin write protect and then uh, the folder all right so this is the application this is the file that I want to protect right click delete and then as you can see it says just drag in or skip basically I can't really modify I cannot really delete the file I cannot edit uh, even if I'm with the administrator account logged in into the system let me show you settings and now yeah Okay. Okay. So um, now I have uh, restarted uh, very quickly because um, I wanted to disable the application control. Uh, just let me double check. But uh, again, let me see. Um, as admin status, yeah. It says right now disabled as you can see um, so now what we're going to do I'm just going to log in into the Arcs IDS and console admin and then my password login all right now the file as you can see I'm gonna try to delete and yeah the file is uh, basically deleted right now from the system um, the, the registry key I mean um, so the Arcs IDSM console opens up as you can see I'm running Arcs IDSM 7.2 this is the latest version um, yeah, this is the default uh, data monitors uh, I have created one active channel which is a uh, like a default active channel uh, showing all kind of events I've just called it um, live active channel so simply I'm going to open it up now while it's evolving um, yeah we have a bunch of uh, arc site internal events um, but after a few seconds let me try to take a look let me say McAfee device vendor equals McAfee a very quick inline filter it's going to show me all kind of uh, McAfee events generated by this device vendor so I have uh, only hmm, from the McAfee policy orchestrator and from solid core but from solid core those are like um, execution of commands that I've been doing um, I guess that the smart connector needs a few seconds
should be able to see as well all these kind of events here that were generated from the application control when it was uh, basically enabled. Let me let's try to clear those entries to remove them. <clears throat> yeah, something like that. So the McAfee EPO database smart connector is time based. Um, so here they are. Yeah, just like I thought it, the smart connector needs some time simply. All right, we have a few, like, uh, as you can see from Solid Core, they have a little bit uh, higher priority. Uh, you can see the attacker IP address, the target IP address basically is the same because I've been trying to access those uh, this file from uh, the server itself. Yeah. I'm going to apply a filter yeah showing the events that uh, we were looking events with the category behavior modify as you can see because we've been trying to modify um, the registry key manually um, even we've tried to delete it uh, and so on to rename etc etc um, here we have only two of those events, but still, um, so yeah, you can see the target IP address, the attacker IP address, the failure, this is the category outcome, and as well the name of the event. Now if you want, what you can do, you can build a rule. You can build a rule looking for this type of events. Probably in the next video that I'm going to build, in the next days, I'm going to show you how to build a rule for this type of events. So. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one.